What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Critical Overload here. Since I'm talking about Screen 5 once again. I know I've been on a roll lately with all these Screen 5 videos and it's not going to slow down once the movie actually comes out. <laughs> so we actually now know officially what the runtime will be for Scream. Uh, this is coming to us courtesy from Big Screen Leaks. Shout out to you. He's saying, or they are saying rather, that they just got word that Scream's final runtime is going to be 1 hour, 54 minutes and 9 seconds. So already I can just say that I like that runtime. Uh, I believe this still would leave Scream 2, of course, at the longest in the franchise with its runtime. And as far as like what I think is capable with a runtime like this, you can accomplish quite a bit. You can give us some characters that are rich. Uh, you get you can give us time to experience personalities from all of them, depending on what you're deciding to you. If you're deciding to use your time wisely, anyway, you can give us time to grow attached to our new protagonist, Sam Carpenter, learn her story. Gives us plenty of time, of course, to see if Melissa Barrera is someone that people that are familiar with the franchise are willing to accept going forward as a new final girl and just allow people who aren't even familiar with Scream. And this will be their first screen movie to just grow attached to her as a final girl and want to see her return or see her story continue in a scream six or scream seven or scream eight give her like a her own trilogy i guess like how sydney prescott got her own trilogy uh there's just so much you can do with this runtime i, I know people will say that this is short i mean there's a lot of movies that i know that are only an hour and 30 minutes and they accomplish quite a bit in that one hour and 30 minute runtime it's all about what you do what are you doing and how are you utilizing your your time some movies uh can manage to be over two hours long and yet by the end they have not developed any of their characters and what i mean is they haven't given their audience a reason to want to see them succeed or give them a reason to even care about what is happening within their lives as it unfolds on screen uh you just have these one-dimensional almost non-existent characters because they're, they're they're basically just rendered as people you see on the screen for over two hours that you don't give a crap about because they're not being written that well you can do that with a two-hour runtime because i've seen plenty of movies do this where they have a runtime that's just wasted on everything but you know getting your audience into these characters you're just going through the motions the narrative is flowing well i guess and everything else is going fine but the characters it's just like okay who are these people why do you why should i care about them i i mean with even with the original scream what i admire about that movie so much is how with even because it's falling around the same runtime we don't get to spend so much time with a like with Stu's Stu, the character of Stu. We learn so much about these characters, despite them not even being in most of the frame, because it's usually Sydney or Ghostface or Sydney and Tatum, who we learn a lot about Tatum, given her association with Sydney. We learn a lot about Gail Weathers, given her association with Sydney. And just the connection that it relates to how she covered the story on her deceased mother. It's just the way you write your narrative can also lend to even if a character isn't the protagonist, they're intertwined in such a fashion that there's always room for you to learn stuff about them, even when they are not even on the screen, such as Gail Weathers. Uh, Matthew Lillard's character Stu again learning stuff about Billy Loomis when he's not on screen when Sydney's explaining how their relationship is going it's just like the, depending on how you write it a character can still be well developed even if they are not always on the screen because another person could be speaking and describing different traits about them going over different things that have happened in their life and then you as the audience can hear these things if you're being attentive and say ah oh, I relate to that Oh, I don't care about that or I don't like that etc like you know what I mean they just there's certain things that you can do with it with a script that even if a character isn't on screen you can accomplish so much when you're trying to have them be well developed and give your audience a reason to care about them this should also of course give us enough time to see a lot of bloodshed get a proper killer reveal at the end have another fantastic finale at the Stumacher house where we see the killer reveals get to see Sydney and Gail have that showdown with Ghostface get to see Sam Carpenter have some type of showdown if she's not being revealed as the killer going off of the trailer that we've seen where she's shown lunging at someone with the buck knife that we know Ghostface utilizes so I know a lot of people have it in their mind that she could be the killer based off of that but again as far as like um 
everything else that could happen you there's just so much that they can do with this i don't want anyone to feel as though there's that this isn't enough time for them to do anything what it all will come down to is that did they manage their time wisely because if you come out of the film thinking that you don't care about any of these characters or that they didn't really provide anything for you to grow attached to them that really would break draw the question to well what did they spend their time doing that you don't feel attached to these characters it could also be a situation where they did enough to develop the characters and you just don't like them because i know i've been in plenty of positions like that where i just don't like certain characters on my screen but there's enough things being intertwined within the narrative as it unfolds for other people to grow attached to them so i wouldn't say there's no lack of character development it's just a situation where i didn't like the characters so hopefully we get a lot of memorable ghost face one lines during this runtime a lot a, a, a hopefully a lot of sydney prescott and when i when i say a lot of sydney prescott i just mean something where she is introduced like hopefully by at least the middle of the first hour or towards the very tail end of the first hour not not at the actual one hour mark itself where she's only on screen for the remaining 54 minutes but just something that is handled in a way where you are making it very apparent that this is again not about Sydney Prescott. She's still going to be involved and she's going to get a decent amount of time on screen when she arrives in Woodsboro. Because I think the first time we will see her could in fact be during the first 30 minutes, first 40, after Sam and Richie presumably leave Dewey's house after they go to him for help as Melissa Barrera explained at one point in a featurette. And then after that encounter, he, of course, makes a phone call to Sydney. We see them talking on the phone. It flashes to her with her kids. We see what her life is like right now. And then we jump to life in Woodsboro again until something happens where she is brought back into the thick of things at the tail end of that first hour. That's how I think it should play out. But let me know what you guys think about the runtime down in the comment section below. What do you think could happen in this runtime? Do you think it's long enough? Do you think it's too short? Again, I can't say it enough. I don't think it's a matter of the runtime being too short. It's all about what did you do within your runtime you you can develop a character in a plethora of different ways even with a shorter runtime than this it's all about what you're doing with that runtime so let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notification in this video in the description i have links to my social media accounts my facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course if there's any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video